so our first presentation is going to be um, by one of our senior residents now, Dr. Bashir Aladadi. He's going to be talking about washout of septic joint, medical versus surgical management of septic arthritis. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Uh, so we'll discuss the medical versus uh, surgical management of septic arthritis, and at the end we'll vote on a statement. So in the interest of time, I'll go through the introduction phase fast, and then we'll uh, discuss uh, the studies uh, after. So no disclosures. So septic arthritis is an infection in the joint. Usually these are caused by bacteria, but it can also be caused by other micro microorganisms. Bacterial infections tend to be the most destructive. The incidence is only about 0.2 to 0.7 percent, leading to admissions, but the mortality remains uh, high. Uh, most of these arise from a hematogenous uh, seeding uh, of the synovial membrane, and that's because the synovial membrane has no uh, limiting base membrane, so it allows the organism to enter, and uh, organisms such as Staph aureus tend to stick to the synovial membrane and cause a septic joint. Uh, some of the predisposing factors include uh, advanced age, joint disease, recent surgery, IV drug use, and immunosuppression, including diabetes. These are usually monomicrobial. Staph aureus, including MRSAs, are the most common. Some other gram positives, including Streptococcus, uh, can be seen. Gram negative bacillus are usually seen in older adults, immunosuppressed, or IV drug use, especially Pseudomonas in our IV drug use population. And then, uh, unless it's from a trauma, polymicrobial infections are uncommon. These patients present with red, hot, swollen, and painful joint. They have limited range of motion, and they have uh, pain with passive and active range of motion. Uh, so the gold standard for diagnosis is arthrocentesis. Uh, usually see white blood cell count over 50,000 to 150,000 uh, with a neutrophilic predominance. Gram stain and cultures can be positive in most of these and blood cultures are usually positive in 50% of the patients. Imaging is not required for diagnosis, but in some of the uh, joints such as the hip or, or the sacroiliac joint where it may be difficult to examine the patient, it may be of some use. Uh, so management is basically initiating systemic parental antibiotics after getting the synovial fluid. Uh, and joint drainage is essential and well recognized uh, because we're essentially dealing with a closed abscess. Now, the discussion today is what approach to drainage is more preferable uh, based on the evidence. Should we do a medical approach with serial bedside needle arthrocentesis versus arthrotomy or arthroscopic lavage? And that's basically who you talk to. The surgeons uh, mentioned that uh, it's a closed space and then visualization of the joint is necessary and needle aspiration is not gonna get all the pearl and material out and that can lead to rapid joint destruction. Uh, and then they even argue that sometimes it's required to directly visualize the joint to see if there's any uh, osteomyelitis. But then the rheumatologists argue that the needle aspiration is more preferred and that can be repeated on an ongoing basis if the effusion returns and there's less risk with it compared to surgery. So let's see what the data shows. So the first study is native joint septic arthritis, and I wanna mention these are all in native joints. These are not prosthetic joints. This is a comparison of medical versus a surgical management. This was uh, published in 2019. This was a 10 year retrospective single center. And, and as you will see, most of these studies, uh, the sample size is small because the incidence is low, even though they look over an extended period of time. So here, they had 41 patients that were managed surgically with arthrotomy or arthroscopy versus 33% that were managed medically. They looked at joint recovery, time to recovery, length of stay, dispo to home or rehab, and their overall mortality. And they found no significant difference in the outcome at 12 months. And the patients that were treated medically with arthrocentesis, they were likely to experience full recovery at three months, and they less likely needed short-term rehab after uh, discharge. So here, looking at the data, we can see that the age of these patients in the medical and the surgical group are similar. Uh, here they break it down by the, by the joints. There were eight knees that were treated with medically and then 20 of them were treated surgically. Uh, all the wrists and the elbows, they grouped them in one category and then they were all treated medically and then they grouped together the hips and the shoulders and 
I think there were one or two sternoclavicular joints that were treated surgically. Uh, the comorbidities were similar, uh, systemic signs and their presentation was also similar, and then the most common organism was staph, MRSA and MSSA. So here they looked at the uh, full recovery and three and 12 months, and as you can see the medical group tend to, did, uh, they did better at three months, at 12 months they had similar uh, outcomes. And then obviously the ones that didn't get surgery were able to be discharged home, compared to the surgical group, and then they required less rehab. And then here, they looked at the joints, and then most of the joints in the study were knees, as you will see in other studies, and it looks like the medical group did a little bit better in terms of the knees, the wrists and the elbows were all treated medically, and then the hips and the shoulders were treated surgically. The next study also looked at the medical versus surgical approach in treatment of septic arthritis. This was a single center study, looked at an eight year period res retrospectively. They had 49 patients that were managed with arthrocentesis and then 14 patients that were treated either with arthroscopy or arthrotomy. Uh, here the medical group were older, they had more comorbidities and then 15 of the patients out of the 49 they had poor prognosis, so they eventually required surgery. And then out of these, se this is a typo, sorry, this, seven of them were knees, four shoulders, and the three hips. So in conclusion, they said there was no significant difference in the functional recovery, but then they mentioned that maybe the hip and the shoulder group uh, tend to do better with a surgical approach if that's available and appropriate initially. Here they break it down by the joints. As you can see, there were 34 knees, followed by eight shoulders and seven hips, but they didn't go into which ones. Uh, they didn't break it down between medical and the surgical group. Over here, this was another similar study retrospective, looking at 32 medical and 19 surgical cases uh, with monoarticular septic arthritis. And then the medical treatment resulted in complete recovery in 69 versus 53% of the patients that underwent surgery, but they had longer hospitalization. And then more of the surgical patients had deterioration in their functional status, and more of them needed physiotherapy, which makes sense. Uh, so they concluded that surgical treatment's not superior to medical treatment. And looking at the data a little closer, you can see that the medical group were older. Uh, in terms of the joints, again, the knees uh, were the most prevalent in the study, 24 versus 13. Uh, the hips, four of the, the four of the hips were managed surgically, uh, and the shoulders, there was one in the surgical group. The risk factors, uh, the medical group had more risk factors, and then the organism was again staph. Uh, this was a systematic review looking at the management of septic arthritis. They basically reviewed 80, 80 articles for native joint septic arthritis, and then they found six papers out of the six, Five of them looked at surgical approach, so I didn't include those, but then one looked at medical versus surgical. Again, this was an eight-year retrospective study with 59 total patients, and they had better function in the medical group, 67 versus 42%. But they had a higher trend toward mortality in the medical group, and they attributed that to their patients being sicker, older, and presenting with more sepsis. Uh, in the study, the hips were again managed medically, and the wrists were managed with uh, arthrocentesis. Here they looked at the needle aspiration versus the surgical group, and then as you can see, 34 knees versus six, and then uh, the hips were four to one uh, surgery. But then when they looked at the outcomes in the infected joints, uh, total 46 patients treated medically versus 17 surgery. They had an 80% good outcome in the medical group versus 47% in the surgical group. And then there was a 53% poor outcome in the surgical group that was characterized by either persistent effusion, contracture, secondary osteomyelitis. And then they mentioned that the four hips, the four hips here that were treated surgically, uh, they all had complications after, so that probably uh, contributed to their negative results. But even when they excluded four hips, their good outcome only raised to 53%, and that's still lower than the 80% in the medical group. This was a 25-year literature review on outcomes with either medical versus surgical drainage. They had 371 joints. Most of them were treated medically. And then they had a 66 versus 57 uh, response in the medical group with the successful outcome, and this was significant. Again, they had a higher mortality in the medical group. Uh, 
And then here, they break it down by the joints. Again, the knees are the most prevalent. And then the hips here were equal seven in the surgical group and six in the medical group. And the shoulders were more 28 uh, versus 11 in the surgical group. And here, they go into more details in terms of outcome based on which joint and which uh, approach they receive. But as you can notice, there's less number of joints here because some of the series, they didn't really go into details in terms of which joints did better with which outcome. But as you can see, 45 knees in the medical group versus 35 in the surgical group. The hips were two to two, but then the shoulders were 13 with a good outcome in the medical group versus two in the surgical group. So in conclusion, from that review, they said that the initial use of needle aspiration compared to surgical approach uh, leads to better improvement. And they also saw a similar trend, but this wasn't significant in when they broke it down to each joint. But then again, they mentioned that the hip infections may be one exception because of their deep-seated location. And then it may be difficult to aspirate fluid even if you want to go with a needle first. Uh, here, uh, <clears throat> this is just a study looking at treatment of septic arthritis of the hip in 34 pediatric uh, patients. Uh, 20 of them were treated with repeated aspiration. Four of them eventually needed surgery with arthrotomy. Uh, but then the 24 that were treated with uh, arthrocentesis, the number of times that they recorded was 3.6, and 75% of these patients were able to ambulate on the second day. So, and then they followed these patients for seven years and they saw no complications. So they concluded that repeated aspiration may be safe and efficacious, even in hip joint. Uh, but this was a study in children again. This was a prospective trial uh, in Malawi that they looked at 31 patients that were treated with aspiration and 30 with arthrotomy, and this was septic arthritis of the shoulder. Uh, the most common organism was a non-typhoidal salmonella in these groups. They both received antibiotics, and then they developed this scoring system from zero being worse outcome to 12 being good outcome, and they looked at that as well as radiological evidence uh, at the end of the 12 months. And basically, this is how the two groups fared. So in the first week, obviously, they were, uh, that's when they presented. But then starting from the second week to the 12-month mark, it looks like that they did pretty similar in the aspiration versus the surgical group. And then the last paper talks about the clinical characteristics of patients with septic arthritis. This was a recent paper published in November 2019. Again, a retrospective study at a single tertiary care center between 98 to 2015. They looked at 441 septic joints. 382 of them were managed operatively versus 59 non-operatively. The only issue is they didn't mention in the study what non-operative means. Now, it's safe to assume that they probably received one arthrocentesis initially to be diagnosed with septic arthritis, but they didn't go into further details in terms of what kind of management the ones that didn't get surgery received. Uh, again, the non-operative group with older, 64 versus 58 percent, and they were also sicker, 37 versus 32, and then that probably played some role into not taking these patients for surgery. The most common pathogen was MSSA, and then they concluded that there was no significant sequelae in post-discharge imaging. And they broke it down by the, by the joints. You can see the, the population mostly received uh, surgery was the, uh, was the knee joint, and then the hips, and then the wrist were managed more non-operatively. And then the shoulders were about the same. And then they looked at the outcome in these patients. As you can see, about the same length of stay but then uh, the surgical patients, about 55% versus 37% of, uh, percent of those, they were discharged to a rehab facility. Uh, the medical group had a higher ICU admission, probably because they were older and sicker. The surgical group had a higher readmission rate from 18 to 15%. And then the medical group had a higher mortality at 30 days, 12% versus 4%. But again, that's 80% survival in the medical group. Okay. Um, does anybody have any comments, questions? Two parts. Firstly, I'm wondering how sick the operative versus medical management group was or how they decided who to go operate on versus just do arthrocentesis. 
Uh, and then secondly, do you recall if there's any difference in antibiotic management between the groups in these studies? Did the medical group receive either longer treatment or better treatment? Uh, in terms of the antibiotics, both cohorts received the same uh, number of days for IV antibiotics, and they were all started after the initial arthrocentesis for diagnosis. In terms of the groups that were non-operative, they mentioned that because of their, they were not great surgical candidates. Because of their age, they were sicker initially. And then some of these older patients, the uh, diagnosis of septic arthritis wasn't established until a couple of days into the admission because a lot of them had overlying crystal-induced uh, disease. So that kind of threw them off a little bit. But basically, they were not good surgical candidates, and that's why they didn't want to take them to operation. All right, so I think it's time to uh, vote. Is it a myth? Surgical washout with arthroscopy, arthrotomy, is mandatory in the initial management of septic joint. How many people think this is true, that this is confirmed, this is a true statement? How many think that it's um, plausible? And how many think it's a myth, that it's busted? Okay. You want to hit that? <laughs>